Hey everyone, welcome back to the Able Launch GameFi channel. This is Zach, also known as Training Aloha on Twitter. And today, we're going to take a look at Snail Trail and the updates they've made since we haven't revisited the game in a few months. The team has done a great job at keeping the information flowing on Discord, Twitter, as well as on their medium. So we're going to kind of walk through the medium from October that they announced their Q3 summary and Q4 expectations, and then touch on some of the Q4 launches that they've already delivered as we approach the end of the year. So taking a look at the table of contents here in the medium from October, they really promised to come up with a couple of things. The in-game shop, the mission tickets, the mega race mode, the laboratory, profiles, and some other improvements. All these things the team has delivered on, and we're just going to touch on some of the major ones that make big changes to the game. A lot of that is the mission tickets, the mega race mode, and the laboratory being a huge improvement. And when we get to quarter four, we see the isometric view was released. Uh, on 1 December, and we can take a preview of that, and we can see the upcoming flex competitive races, and then guild and tournaments that's going to be coming in Q4 and into Q1. The first big change from Q3 was the in-game shop and the mission ticket system. While the in-game shop currently only holds a couple of things, which is the mission ticket and a, a bunch of upcoming things that are going to be released, having the mission ticket be, av be available to purchase helps you being able to launch your missions as you need without having to do uh, and wait for them to build up over time. But one of the other things the team did to kind of balance out the burning of the mission tickets and for the need for everyone to have one uh, was the reduction from every player needing to use a mission ticket to only the person that launches the race needing to use a mission ticket to start it. So that, as they say, reduces the total necessary transactions for every player by 10, 10 times the original amount, which is huge. That protects players from bots that usually fill the game, which we still do see in some in some ways, but it actually hasn't been as bad as it was before when you could never find a race that wasn't all the way full till nine out of 10. Um, so that's been great. Uh, they, uh, and they also put a cap on how many mission tickets you can go on the negative for, because as has changed, you know, you wanna make sure it's fair to all players so they can adjust to their balance of tickets that they hold. Uh, so now you can go into negatives, but you can't go in more than negative 50. That way, you know, there's at least a chance for everyone to join the race or you can buy um, from the shop if you absolutely need a race. And it's really cheap at 0 .00085 uh, AVAX. So that's been a great addition. I love to see the team continuing to deliver that and continuing to find ways to balance the mission ticket system so that joining a race isn't really overrun by bots, but also kind of levels the playing field uh, for every every person who's joining the game. Before we keep going, I just want to touch on one of the items that wasn't on the roadmap that the team delivered as a surprise back in August. It was called the Mega Race Mode. And the Mega Race Mode is a, is a great addition. It starts with a minimum of 16 snails and gets capped at an entry of 64 snails. And the prizes are delivered in AVAX instead of slime. So the, the great thing here is it's a Coliseum-based mode where you race from the center of a circle out towards the edges, and the top 25% of snails that enter uh, will win a, a prize. So it's just a really way to break up the the initial you know ways between the daily competitive races that were available uh, in different leagues and now adding this uh, new way of winning even more prizes uh, onto the end and i think that's a great way the team kind of just delivered an extra thing that wasn't on the roadmap but is also fun and engaging um they run uh, when the timer runs out you can see kind of on the mega race page uh, you see when the next one is and you can kind of see exactly you know, who you're up against, the level of snails you're up against. The entry fee is 0.1 AVAX, and currently the prize pool is 1.62. Um, and this will run when it's filled, uh, or it can run with as little uh, as the 16 snails. So uh, this one's still counting down. Uh, I wish it was closer to entry time so I could live stream it during this video, uh, but they're great and they run all the time. And you can see them run uh, on the Snail Trail game Twitch page uh, as well when they're live. Uh, they do run the races here too, so it's always fun to check in on them when they're when they're when they're running, just to see how um, the game's going and how the improvements are made. So uh, it's great. I love this addition to the the team made, and, and I look forward to keep watching these as they grow. So we'll kind of transition back to the to the Q3 roadmap here, and a big one here is the uh, the laboratory. I really want to focus on this one because this is a huge way the team has made to change the game dynamics. Uh, it basically is a way where you can burn your snails, consolidate your snails, and then upgrade them to unlock certain uh, new things that you can do uh, with your snails. And we'll kind of walk through that. And I want to jump back to um, the medium that they did um, when they first talked about the laboratory a while ago. So we'll try to talk about what it is and, and what the, the progress is. So basically, um, it introduces three different things, the incubator, the microwave, and the pressure pot. Um, so the microwave is going to be where you can bring your snails and you can burn them. And as you burn them, you can pick through the ashes and you'll find, you know, different types of common, epic, legendary drops in there. 
uh, that you can use. So what can you find? You can find slime boost, XP boost. You can change your name of your, your um, snail. Uh, you could breed new snails, you could adaptation snails, where you can change those adaptations if you don't like the ones you have. Uh, and then you have Genesis dust, which can only be dropped by burning Genesis snail. Uh, and you know, and that's a, that's a great little way to kind of hold on to those Genesis ones. As more are burned, uh, there'll be less Genesis snails uh, in circulation. So I think that that's great. And you can find all of this uh, in the game if you go under laboratory. Uh, you can find you know the the incubator as we've seen in the four before, where you can breed the two snails together. Uh, the microwave where you can burn those snails you can drop any of the snails that you have uh, into the microwave to burn them to get the ashes and then you take that pressure pot where you can mix the dust and we'll talk kind of about that so the pressure pot uh, is basically where um, you can harness all those things together and you can choose what you want to add so you can combine slime boost from the, the microwave with a snail uh, it will merge it and then it will actually add um, your, your slime boost from like 2.5 to 3 uh, by adding that 0.5 slime boost. Uh, by combining two Genesis dust, uh, you can get a higher purity Genesis dust. So basically you can combine two uh, P11s and that way you would get, you know, uh, P12. And then you combine two P12s to get a P13. Uh, but once you do it, of course, you can't reverse it. And then of course you can combine a Genesis dust with a snail. So say you do a Genesis dust P12 with a snail purity of 12, the same snail upgraded to a Genesis class snail. So it's only possible between P12, P12 and P20, so you can't merge anything lower than that. So just keep that in mind um, as you continue on. So it's kind of important to jump into a little bit of how that benefits you, as, as especially on the slime boost page. Uh, there was a lot of questions when the incubator and the microwave and, and you know, the pressure pot all came out. It's like really, how does the slime boost affect you? So every snail is born with a, a 1.0 modifier. Basically, if you win a race that has 15 slime, you get 15 slime. Uh, if you upgrade that using some of the slime boost dust, let's say you had a snail that had a 1.0 and you add the slime boost and they get 2.0, they would earn uh, 20 slime for a race that they would originally win 10. If you get it up to a 3.0, you'd win 30 slime for a race that win 10. Uh, you know, If you want to look at it that way, you can consolidate some of your snails into one. That way you earn the same amount with the best snail you have that you would have earned across two or three snails. Of course, that does lower your chances of winning. Um, if you're if uh, you have three snails and you run three races, uh, your probability of one of those races being uh, a higher finish than the others is a little bit higher. Uh, but if you're upgrading your snail stats, maybe you can even that out uh, where your one best snail wins the same amount percentage time uh, as the three would have. So it's up to the player to kind of decide exactly how they want to approach that. Uh, but I think that's a very interesting way that the team did to kind of help, you know, increase the amount of snails that are burned, thus lowering the overall supply, uh, and then, you know, making the, the higher quality snails more valuable. And just to add a nice little addition to the, like burning a snail is not burned and gone forever. While the snail is gone forever, the team did uh, keep the snail page. Uh, that's kind of like a, a homage to exactly the snail as it was before when it previously lived, but is now is now dead. So you can still find those snails through the marketplace or the profile filters, and it'll pull up their previous page, but they're no longer available. So it, it's just a, a nice little addition that I forgot to mention uh, on the, the way the team continues to kind of just deliver a little bit extra uh, that they didn't have to do just to keep the game more entertaining and, and more fun for players involved. Uh, and this also helps, you know, all the slime being burned through all these methods is helping like slow down the inflation inflationary aspect of the game and help make it more of a deflationary uh, on the overall slime slime economy. So that's been a great way to see. So I think that as the team continue, continues through Q4 uh, into Q1, I, I'm really excited to see what what's next on the agenda for them because uh, I think that they've demonstrated even during this awful market that they continue to go above and beyond on everything they've uh, get, promised to deliver and have done so in a great way and they're also very easy to interact with so I, I thank them for that i just wanted to take the time to kind of stop going through the medium and just you know thanks to, to the team for that well the next thing i want to talk about is something the team just released at the beginning of december and that's the isometric view uh, i think it's a huge improvement over the way the game was previously viewed as if you can remember and we'll show an example of the top down view that we've seen prior to this point where it was just a little adaptation uh, where you could see and kind of a color of your snail, but it didn't really uh, show exactly the attributes and the traits and exactly how your snail looked. And it was top down, um, so you couldn't really see anything of details on the course. The new view is in a huge improvement over the previous view. So if you take a look at kind of how Snail Trail ran their races before, you can see exactly how it looked. You know, you see top down, 
snails one through 10, and you have to find, figure out which one you were. Uh, and it just didn't necessarily match exactly what your snail looked like. So it was hard to tell like snail, snail whale here, 10, uh, you can see, you can't really tell he's got a helmet on, but he's got no helmet here. So there really was no, um, you know, clear picture of who your snail was like even snail nine, snail Tron 3000 is red, uh, here, he's kind of like a, like a purple ish color. So here's the huge improvement over the isometric view. And let's take a look and kind of walk through exactly how you enter these races and what they look like if you haven't seen them before. So if you go into the daily missions, you can see, you know, the huge improvement already, as we mentioned in the ticket system, that these aren't already filled up with bots uh, in prior versions before they released the ticket system and all that stuff. This would instantly be nine of 10 uh, with the last person being uh, the person who pays um, waiting to launch the race. Uh, but we'll kind of we'll, we'll run one here. I'll see if I can find one that matches my adaptations to have a, a good chance uh, of being competitive to win. Uh, I think I've got, uh, we'll see, we'll enter uh, this one here where it's got uh, the adaptations for the course are beach, wet, and dodge. And I've got quite a few, uh, at least one snail that I think is good in the rain that hasn't run yet. So we'll take our little driving with dengue. And then you hit sign. And as I'm the last one to enter, I'm going to have to submit a uh, cost. And it costs about five cents to run this race with gas which is not bad at all. Uh, once that transaction is finished, this race should disappear off of the list and move into the next to run column. And if I want to look before I start, you can see all the snails that I'd be up against, uh, their class, their generation, and what adaptations are already involved in the race. So, okay, it's successful. We'll see it show up on next to run. And it is a, uh, let's see, let's see. Let's see, just my, crawl into my races to see which ones are coming up. And we've got it starting in about 17 minutes. So I will you know, cut this here so we don't have to sit and wait. And then we'll hit watch ISO uh, when the race is going to run. Uh, so we'll stop it there for a minute and then we'll come right back. Okay, and we're back with about 18 seconds to go. So if you want to see the same thing, you can look into the game. Uh, you can see the snails that are racing, their ELO, their class. And then you can go on here and watch in the old style or watch in the isometric view. And we'll click that just to get in there before the game starts. Uh, it'll load up with the Unity engine, give you a couple seconds, and then it should load into the actual match itself, uh, showing the new view. Uh, I've had some issues in the past where sometimes it gets stuck on loading, um, so hopefully this will work out as we intended to, but it does look like... Okay, there it goes. Um, so you can see how you can instantly see, as it kind of just already started, the way your snails look actually match uh, exactly the snail that you're racing. So it looks like I'm getting blown out here. Uh, I've already fallen quite far behind. You can see how long is left in the race with about 50 meters to go. And then up on the right, you see the name of the race as well as the adaptations that do well here. Uh, on the bottom, you can see the music, which you can uh, put on or off. Uh, it starts as on, but sometimes there's a little bug where you gotta click it back and forth to make it work, which I'll do just to kind of put some music on as we finish this race as we are in ninth. Uh, but here we go. We can see that, you know, this top two snails have pretty much far and away blown out everybody else with about 10 meters left on the race. So we'll see if we can come back here. Uh, looks like we're stuck in about eighth place. As we kind of wrap it up, Snail 6705 seems like it's gonna win by uh, a landslide. So we'll just watch until the end here and we'll show, we'll turn the music off once we get to the finish line. And then it kind of zooms back into the final snails we finished in. Uh... So here's where I've noticed a bug on the isometric view. It says we finished in second, as we clearly saw we were way down in eighth place. Um, and it says that we won 12 slime, uh, but the issue is quickly adjusted to the actual results that you saw before the finish race. If you go into results uh, and you remember the, the name of the race, we can see here we are at the Brit. Uh, we were at, uh, let me refresh to get the recent ones up here. And just go back to my races results. And actually not showing up on the results yet so it looks like it hasn't loaded back in quite yet uh, but once it does uh, i've noticed that you can you'll see the actual result where i finished i think in seventh or eighth uh, and that will you know okay now it's on see here we are talk uh distance treasury run for the free race pull down the tab and you can see i did finish in eighth and one three slime as a result so i think that's the only bug i've kind of noticed in the new isometric uh view and i think the team's well aware of that since it's only been out a couple of days i'm sure that'll be fixed shortly but i do love the detail um, that this changes from from the top down view to the new view uh, so I, I love the improvements a lot more fun to watch the races as they progress
And that kind of wraps up the, the improvements that the team's made from, you know, end of Q2 through Q3 and into Q4. Uh, what we're going to see coming up here from Q4 to Q1, we've got guilds and tournaments on the horizon. Um, so they're going to be able to create guilds where you can stake a large amount of slime. Uh, there'll be governance models that are introduced. Uh, there'll be, you know, a whole new leg of snail trail that's unlocked. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of information beyond that published. So we're going to keep an eye on that and we'll update you as that information comes out. Uh, and then they'll be following the guild release. There'll be tournaments where it'll be guild competitions where you, the guilds will select their top racers within the guild uh, and compete for great prizes. Uh, so we're interested to see kind of how the guild leaderboard shakes out and what the tournaments will be and exactly what the prizes will be. And I'm sure, you know, as we've seen the team drop mega races as a surprise and the continued small minor improvements to the game, uh, we'll con continue to see them do so throughout Q4, Q1 uh, as they kind of polish up some of the other um spots of the game that they think needs a little bit of improvement and i think they've done a great job listening to the feedback from the community as well uh, and, and attempting to keep the game balanced and fun uh, and keep everybody engaged so you can follow along in their white paper as well uh, if you jump over uh, to the white paper on their website uh, at docs.snailtrail.art you can see everything they do in their change log uh, at the bottom of their white paper so you can see exactly what they did they just introduced core wallet support last month which works great uh, they've got the isometric view that we just saw that we just launched on 1 December uh, and then we'll continue to watch this as they kind of tweak those results to make uh, the isometric view even better um, so that's been really about it for the update on snail trail uh, I'm excited the team continues to deliver through the the market that we're in uh, and really have been full speed ahead since launch so thanks to them and and I hopefully this video has helped you uh, understand the laboratory, the burning, and the new isometric races a little bit better. Uh, if you can, drop us a, a like and a subscribe to help keep this content flowing along. You can follow me over at Trading Aloha on Twitter. Shoot me a message there anytime, and you can see, find the, the Snail Trail team over on Twitter as well, and advise you to jump in the Discord too if you have additional questions, because the team's always available, as well as the community members to help kind of answer those. So thanks again. I hope you guys had a great November, and looking forward to what December and January hold. Talk to you next time. Thank you.